Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Troy from DDM's Realm, and I have some River District stuff for you. If you haven't already, please throw me a subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. And please share my videos with any of your fellow players or guildies that might find these useful. Uh, for this video, I am going to run through the, uh, the well, one of the dungeons. And for this one, we're going to pop open one of these. Oh, not that one. We're going to open up the ornate, ornately carved lockbox. Uh, for this, we're going to grab the Fireforge portal and run through this one real quick. So you can pick, if you've unlocked these sections, you can pick them um, to unlock the dungeons themselves. You want to be able to come in here and choose, so if you do confront Girion, that is the uh, Plague Fire area. Uh, Cabal is the one we're doing today, will allow you to open, get uh, Cabal stones. Or there's Mastura that will let you do the Fey area. Uh, this particular one, we're going to go ahead and do the uh, fire area. And so we can open this up, get the fire forged portal stone. We'll add that to our inventory. You can also get these uh, portal stones as rare drops from any of the heroic encounters around. And if you have the companion uh, here, uh, the mage slayer that's out of the Zen store, uh, it'll actually give you a additional bonus to get portal stones from these encounters as well as grant you 10% uh, damage bonus when fighting these guys so that's a pretty cool thing to have if you need portal stones um, another way to grab or to get the boxes themselves is to complete one of these tasks is to secure the district which gives you the ornate box there or resist the rituals which is right there all right so this one we are going to get our uh, fireforge portal stone you need to double click on it and make sure you get the quest Trial of Fire and Iron. And to find that, you can come to the very bottom section of the fire area, the third, um, was it guard post, whatever, and it is where the BHE spawns right around the corner. So if the BHE is up, you will not have access to this, so I would suggest jump into a different instance where this BHE is not up. It, um, and then when it's not up, these guys are just sitting around here that's easy to move around. Alright, and then we'll jump on in here. It's kinda cool, these are, uh, each of these are kinda like a skill based kinda trial type of thing. Watch out when you get in here, the first step is a doozy. And do not buff or anything like that, cause it is likely you're going to die, especially if it's the first couple times through. So, do not buff up and just uh, follow your, follow the path in here. Now, as you may or may not know, I like to farm and kill everything because I have uh, the Wanderer's Fortune on a couple of my companions as well as I keep the Dragon Horde's enchantments on all my utility stuff. So I always kill stuff whenever I can because all that does is feed me utility stones. So your first set of challenges to jump over here and dodge these. Watch out for these jets, they will knock you off, but I prefer to actually go below on this first one. A little buddy shot in there, which is pretty kind of funny. <laughs> anyway, I like to go below here. I uh, kill these guys real easy. It's a bunch of these low-level kind of minion dudes. Um, and farm some gear, farm some stones. Pretty easy. As you can see, my companion has already died. So I'm not going to... If you want to fight him, you need him, you can try to resummon him. But this pr first set's easy to grab. Um, easy to kill. And you can see your little jumps over here, you got the jets that are shooting out, uh, and this next little section, kind of up to you, there's some meter guys that are below, some of like the, the mini boss type creatures, so I usually go down and kill them too, because they're pretty easy, or this I'll kind of show you how you can jump on over here, so this one, so if you fall, it's not a big deal, you just have to fight, but I usually fight anyway, just so I can farm those refined stones. And each little section that you come to, if you fall in, you'll come back to the little campsite that's set up. Alright, now these switches shows you that you have to drop a platform down to get the final switch. Um, and one of the nice things about these is that they are instant switches. So as soon as you click F, it activates them. You don't have a timer or anything. The bad part about this is lag, rubber banding, server issues, 
all kinds of stuff will make it so you will get shot off even though you think you're safe. So as you see, I'm jumping through here and before the fires come through. If you don't think you're going to make it stand right on the switches, the switches are safe spots on all this stuff. Um, and as you get further away from the nozzles, they have a wider area of effect. So if you're closer to this side, you're safer than being towards the end. So this one drops the final one. We'll run over here. Sorry, my tank is very slow because all my utilities are the refined stone stuff instead of movement. I know a lot of people like to fill those up with movement so they don't feel like they're slugging through these quests. Alright, last little section to dodge. Um, this one, kind of keep your... stay on this gray rock. I've actually bumped into the black rock on either side and have died several times even though I didn't actually go off the trail. So I try to stay on the gray rock because it's a little wiggy in here. Once that gives you a chance, shoot straight across to follow the flames up to the nozzles here. This one knocks me off almost every time. So I get as close to the nozzles as possible. And as soon as they shut off, I run through and try to cut across. So you saw the nozzle didn't even work, but it shot me off anyway. Great. So that's what I'm saying. Even if you know exactly what you're doing, your timing is fine, and your character's fast enough, you can easily still be knocked off here. So try not to get upset about it, because it's going to happen. Uh, just don't buff yourself up or use any of your items until you're through. When I try to get around the corner, I try to hop down that edge and catch it like that. So even if they do turn on and push you, because they often will, your tune will kind of get hung up there and not get shot into the abyss. All right, so since I died and there's, I lost my companion, come down here, take a quick breather, open up, pull out, get your companions back out, throw your buffs on. All right, we'll make our way across the bridge here. So you spent all this time being knocked off into the lava, and then you're like, oh, great, now I'm across the bridge full of a bunch of characters that, you know, these guys just love to explode and knock you around as you die. So if you're worried about, oh, geez, I'm getting to the edge, ah, oh, you can't get knocked off in here. Probably because they would don't want you knocking their mobs off, so don't worry about that. I was actually kind of disappointed when I found out you couldn't get knocked off. But I figured the devs are probably doing that because they don't want you knocking off all these creatures. They want you to fight them. Which, frankly, again, is fine with me because that just means more loot, more refined stones. Because if I was GMing this, I certainly would be uh, blasting my players off. That is for sure. They'd hate me for it, and I would laugh. And we'd all look back on it as fond memories. <laughs> anyway, uh, as a tank, I can kill all those guys in a one shot. But if you can't, you can easily pull those into four different groups. And each time they're a little different. You'll notice as you grind through these things over and over and over that uh, as these sets come through, um, they'll be different. Sometimes you'll get these big like mini boss guys. Other times you'll get a swarm of little minion dudes. I guess it all depends on what kind of character you are and what makes a difference. This four set or set of four uh, comes one at a time, so it's pretty easy to handle. If you're still struggling with them, you can even turn around. See how they run in this direction? You can actually take that first set, run way over here, and then give yourself plenty uh, room to work, uh, to kite them around if you want to, get some range on them, whatever your, your fighting style is. 
Mine is staying in the middle of everything and take it. So as you can see, like, I got bags full of all these stones and everything that I get from uh, killing all this stuff and having the different uh, enchantments and abilities to get extra gear or extra refined stones. I'll tell you what, a couple weeks that refined weekend's coming up, it will be nice. Alright, so there you have it. Now we are to the boss fight. Uh, just like the other bosses in this area, um, there's kind of a some tactics that you're going to want to use with uh, him, and I'll show you this. So, to start off here, he's going to be immune to attacks. So keep that in mind. Don't just charge on in and start swinging because you're just going to waste your time and effort. Uh, excuse me. Alright, so... When he has that red spot around him, he's going to teleport. So he explodes around him, but he also teleports. And then he will flood one half of the dungeon, either the inner half or the outer half. This ring is the divider side. So if he's on the inner ring, go to the inner ring and you'll be fine. If he's on the outer ring, go to the outer ring. And I like when he's on the inner ring here because he's, if you see his anvil is forging bad guys. So what you want to do is actually fight these uh, mobs. And then once you uh, get through the first four, you don't have the chance to make him vulnerable. So see how I got this chain attached to me now? It's actually uh, pulling me and doing damage. But if I take this chain and make it go through this orb, it'll superheat that chain and break it and stop that damage. It's basically a way to show you how to start making him vulnerable. Because now I have a little ball and chain on me, which does a bunch of damage, but once you get it over to him, you can explode it on him, and now you see his armor is red hot, so it's like super heated, and now he's vulnerable. So he moved to the outer ring, so now I want to make sure I'm on the outer ring so I don't get hit. But now with his armor super heated, he's vulnerable, he can be hurt, and you can lay into him now. Just remember, drag that that uh, ball and chain over to him as soon as you get the chance, run it right through him, and then you can start beating him down. Because once he's ready to uh, once he's ready to be hurt, he's easy to fight. He will help you across if he happens to teleport all the way across the battlefield with that uh, you will not escape judgment power he uses. So that's really all there is to it. It's time to beat him down. Oh, we're not going to get him before he teleports. Alright, so he always... I put my uh, <laughs> my buff down there and then he it decides it's time to move. But like the other bosses, has uh, definitely tells so you can see what he's doing. But if you stay on the ring he's on, you're good to go. Once you get chained, put that onto the orb. And once you get the ball and chain, bring it over to him, superheat him and you're good to go and there you have it you have uh, Cabal's Caldera finished up the trial of fire and iron uh, with that completion you'll get the constructed iron you see here as well as this uh, box right here which could contain uh, some evidence of evil it usually has a refining stone in it has alliance equipment and uh, can have a companion as well which will help you versus the fey ones i don't know maybe i get that confused anyway you can get those from any of these and uh, or you get a companion from each dungeon and it will basically help you fight their co competition or whatever Anyway, there you have it. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have any other videos you want me to do, let me know. And throw me a subscribe and share me with your other friends and players. I really appreciate it. All right. Well, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next dungeon. Bye.